Welcome to the Sherry Show. We are coming to you from a frosty, cold, beautiful Murphy, North Carolina, where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. We are truly in the heart of Appalachia, and part of the heart of Appalachia is great music, often original music, often music, the folk music of years, years ago, and today we're going to be featuring some music that really touched my heart. Um, most of you know that I lost my daughter this year. Um, she had been battling cancer for a while and um, also battling depression. And actually it wasn't the cancer that took her out of here, it was the depression and some things that happened that um, as I look back, we should have seen the warning signs, but we didn't. We were honored to be able to give her the kind of home going that nobody nobody had ever seen anything like this we started out the music of the, the day was leonard skinner angela loved it as we ended we ended with amazing grace it was the service is always about the people left behind and i think that was so important it was important to me that i honor my daughter's memory i honor the things that she did for other people and that we talked about her beautiful smile. Everybody who spoke about Angela talked about that beautiful smile. Today you're going to get to hear a song. Angela had beautiful bright blue eyes and a gorgeous smile. And she was always smiling no matter how down she was or how bad the news was. She was always smiling. I found out my daughter had cancer sitting next to me on live television because she had all the tests done. The results came in on Tuesday. She was my co-host on Wednesday. She said she couldn't figure out a way to tell me. So as we were on a commercial break on the show, I looked at her and I said, oh my gosh, are the test results back? And she said, I'll tell you later. That scared me to death. So when we came back to live television, being a mama and being a worrier, I said, Ange, tell me. And she said, We'll talk about it later. Well, I knew that that was not good news. From that um, came some really good news because some friends gathered around. We had a benefit for her. Things looked well. She had three surgeries. She was doing well, not emotionally, not financially. A lot of things started to come apart. And this time of year, I have to tell you, if you know somebody who is getting down in the dumps, please spend some time trying to reach out to them. Please spend some time trying to just touch them in a way, whether it be talking to them, taking them out to eat, doing something with them to bring them out of that depression that they could possibly be sinking into. Because when we got the toxicology reports back on Angela, she did not die because of cancer. She died because of depression and the combination of some things. That is very, very sad because there was no reason for her to leave here except, and I've had, to, I've had to accept this and understand this, it is all in God's time. And Angela's favorite song was Four Days Late by Karen Peck. You've heard it. Um, I play it often. I love it. I share it with you. I share the message of what it meant to our family. Today we're going to share a song that really, really means a lot to our family. I don't know how many people have had songs written about them. But as I sat in the funeral home and as her service was happening, speaker after speaker and singer after singer came and they talked and they shared and they sung. And then when Mike stood up to sing this song, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, she never knew her great value. She never knew what she meant to us. And I think as we approach the holidays, it is so important if you know somebody that you're thinking, you know, I never told them how special they were. I never told them what their smile means to me. I never told them what their greeting to me as I, as I come to work every morning means to me. I never told them how important it is that they reach out to me every day when I've had a down day. So it's time that we do that. The holidays, there's no time any better. So today we're going to share some music with you. We're going to share some memories. And we had hoped to show you some photos, but we had a little glitch here with the DVD. It doesn't like our DVD player, so we're not going to get to play that. But I'll, we're going to get it transferred onto something else, and we'll play it later. But when you look back at your life, it, it really is about the people that you touched. And um, sitting in a packed funeral home, I can remember looking around and thinking, yeah, Angela did their flowers. Yeah, Angela went to school with their kids. Yeah. And I, and I think about a young woman and her four-year-old child who drove up from Bradenton, Florida to be at the funeral. 
and I thought about it. She's a single mom. She's struggling, but she, she wanted to be here, and she said, Miss Sherry, I had to be there for you. She wasn't there for Angela. She was there for those of us left behind, and I think that's what it's all about. When you pay tribute to someone who's passed away, you are really reaching out to that family. In this community, in the last week or so, there have been so many families who have, who have had to deal with this during the holidays. It's very, very hard. And one of the things that we offer here, our service from Townsend Rose Funeral Home, is to share the obits with you. And as we do it during the holidays, you always think about what it's going to bring, you know, what it's going to mean for that family that first Christmas, that first New Year's, that first birthday without that person. But you know, just look back at the memories because the memories are truly what it's all about. And you will finally, it has been almost 11 months now, I have finally started laughing and smiling when I talk about my daughter. She did so many crazy things. She was so talented. She was so amazing. She was so funny. She was also very, very down. And um, that's something that I want, I want to encourage you. I want you to think about Angela's Angels. I want you to think about you can make a difference in somebody's life. So today, if you know somebody who needs to be, even pick up the phone and call somebody who just possibly lost a family member and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Would you like to go for a cup of coffee? Don't forget the ones that are left behind because you can't do anything for those that have passed on. They're in glory. And um, that, that's a wonderful thing. But you have to think about those that are left behind. I planned my mom's funeral. And Mother and I went round and round about it because she said, Sugar, I don't want any flowers. I want you to use the money you would spend on flowers and help somebody else. And I said, Mama, I'm sorry. I said, I hope you don't come back and haunt me, but we are going to have flowers at your funeral because it's very important to me. The service is about those left behind. It is about what you need to be comforted. And um, I laughed at Mama's funeral because, boy, did we max it out with flowers. I was determined to give my Mama a really special home going, and, and we did. And I, I think about what an honor it was to plan her funeral and to be there and to know how much she meant to me. Six weeks later, I was planning my husband's funeral. And um, it had to be what he was about. And, and then it was the memories we had together. And when you look back... It will finally bring you a little peace and a little comfort. As you're planning it, it certainly doesn't. But then there will be a day that you'll be able to smile again. And um, today you're going you're gonna to get to hear a song about a smile, a very, very special smile. Angela had a beautiful smile, and she shared that with everybody she met. So we're going to talk to Mike in just a little bit. We're back. Okay, welcome our friend Mike Rizuka. Mike, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you. I have um, looked forward to this and also dreaded it because the last time I saw you was at Angela's funeral. Yeah. You were there to honor her and to present a song you wrote about her to her friends and family. Yes. It was amazing to me when she came in and I, I can just see her running into my office and saying, oh my gosh, Mom, Mom, a song's been written about me. And I said, are you serious? And she said, you won't believe it. And she was just, tears were just pouring. And she said, it is so beautiful. Why did you feel it was important to write a song about her? She was going through a hard time, you know, with cancer and all. And it's the only way I could, I could bring out what she really had was a smile. I mean, through... Right. Even when we were kids, you know, if she was going through a hard time or anything, you wouldn't really know it mm -hmm. unless you asked her, you know, and found out that way because she always, always carried a smile. She did. She did. And always. that was, as I look back on things I read that she left, I realized that often that smile was camouflaging the hurt inside. Right. And that was very, very, that's why I've really struggled this year to reach people who are hurting because... We didn't reach Angela when we should have. We kept thinking she's getting stronger, she's getting better, she can handle this. Often, something happens that you can't handle. Right. And we've all looked back and we've all said, why didn't we take the gun? Why didn't we take the pills? Why didn't we stop this? Why didn't we stop this? I believe that God's timing is perfect. I didn't agree with his timing at all. And to plan a funeral for a young a very young, very vibrant, crazy, funny woman was the pits. But her funeral was her. It was laughter. It was music. A lot of tears. But a lot of good memories. And everybody said her smile got me through a tough time in fifth grade. 
Her smile got me through a tough time in seventh grade. She and I used to sit and laugh and talk. There were so many people that she had reached and touched and made a difference in their life. And I think we saw that at her funeral. People came together to honor that smile. And most of the people at the funeral had never heard the song you wrote. Now, how long did it take you to write that song? Uh, it really didn't take maybe maybe half an hour. Really? That tops, yeah. Wow. And, you know, when, when we performed it for you and I, uh -huh. uh, probably hadn't played it maybe three times at the most. Serious. I mean, so. Now, who was the guy who accompanied you? Because when you first did it on live TV, you brought somebody with you who played with you. Yeah, he was a... He's a friend of mine from a previous band, uh, Johnny Watson, uh -huh. uh, real good guitar player. Uh, he uh, he volunteered to help me with it because you know told him you know the situation and why the song was written and he actually went on Facebook and was looking at her pictures and stuff and he you know and he said yeah this. That the smile. Lyrics, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely perfect. Now, did you change anything about the lyrics after she died? Because I never asked you that. No. No, everything was left as it was. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I haven't played it since the funeral. Wow. So, wow. That so was today. The hardest, that was the hardest yeah. I've ever had to do. Yeah. And today we did have it on DVD just in case you or I, either one, fell apart because. I do often think I can get through something, then I fall apart. Today, we're going to give you all the strength Angela has, and you're going to make it through this song. Um, to to have something like this that will, I hope, help somebody else, you know, because it's like I shared everything about Angela I could with the crisis center because I knew that there are other women going through the same thing she did, whether it's battling cancer, battling an abusive relationship, battling alcohol or drugs. You know, there's so many young women in a fight for their life. Right. Now, do you ever think about writing songs for other people because you've done this one and you see how many people it touched? Yeah, since, since then I wrote one more for, for somebody else and uh, uh, they love it. Yeah. I mean, they made a video uh -huh. for it, so. Right. And it was for a loved one and it passed away. See? There are just so many ways, and, and through whatever we have to give, we can give. You do it through your music. Now, let's talk about your music. I asked you earlier, did you have guitar lessons? No. no. I, just you just, had, I had a friend that showed me three chords, and after that, I started just fell in love with it and started doing it. Yeah, wow. How long have you been writing? Since about 2001. Okay. And what inspired that first song? Everybody that was around me wanted to write a song, and that's 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 what we did. That's it. That's it. Now, as far as a musical career, did you ever think about that? Off and on, I thought about it, but it'd be, you know, there's 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 a lot of great talent out there, and it'd be I I would be an efficient, just one fish in the ocean. So yeah, so uh, I get out and play every once in a while. What's your favorite kind of music? I don't have a favorite. I just you like any, it all? anything that I can play on guitar and sing. Uh -huh. I like. Uh -huh. I mean, anything that's got a good harmony and you know, uh, just a good hook. And I, I like all music, really. Well, I got tickled the other night. I was watching the Garth Brooks concert, and you didn't know this. I don't know if Angel ever shared this with you, but. We did something that I, I don't advise anybody to do. We bought scalper tickets to go see Garth yeah. Brooks. And often you find out that scalper tickets are not really tickets. And you show up and you've paid your money and you don't get to see them. <laughs> well, we were lucky because we bought tickets from somebody in Indianapolis online, which you, I'm giving you all this advice. Don't do what I did. We paid a huge ridiculous price because <laughs> Angela loved Garth Brooks. Brooks. She loved Garth Brooks. So we bought these tickets and we drove all the way to Jacksonville, Florida with these tickets in our hand, not even knowing that these are real tickets. Yeah. So this was like 17 years ago and Angela is so excited and she's just, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, mom, you're going to get to see my man. You're going to get to see Garth Brooks and we're all excited. Well, we, we made this happen for Nick's fifth birthday. 
Well, Nick's five years old. He knows the words to every Garth Brooks song ever. <laughs> and I'm like, this five-year-old can stand up and sing Friends in Low Places. You know? You're like, are you kidding me? But she, I never even heard of Garth Brooks. And Angela kept playing it over and over at the office. And I said, man, I said, you know, she grew up on Cindy Lauper and all yeah. that wild prince and all that yeah. stuff. And then all of a sudden she switches over to Garth Brooks. And I'm like, what is this? So she liked a lot of different types of music. Yeah. And I was a 60s girl and then a country music. I liked the 60s and then I liked the drinking bar room, bar room yeah. stuff where the women whips the guy the for cheating. Talk. Yes, yep. exactly. So Angela and I didn't have a lot in common on music, but when we went to see Garth Brooks, we loved everything about that concert. Well, now he is bringing back the music of his childhood. Yeah. And when he was sitting there the other night singing, he was talking about his mom listened to Motown and uh, Mahalia Jackson and his daddy listened to George Jones. And what a combination. Yeah. And I thought, you know, you can all go to the music of your parents or the music of your grandparents. And then you realize that there's something in all of it that you like. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be just country or just gospel or just rock and roll. Right. You like it all. So. Uh, I've got friends that play real hard rock, and then I've got friends that just play country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I go in between. Yeah. <laughs> well, Angela liked Prince, and I'm going to tell you something. She really liked Prince. She liked yeah. Prince to the point that everything in her room was dyed purple. <clears throat> purple and rain. Purple. Everything was purple. And I have to tell you, when you use purple Ritz dye, and you dye everything in your room, the last thing you want to do is throw everybody else's clothes in the washer with that stuff. <laughs> we all wore purple underwear for a long time <laughs> because everything that we washed turned purple. Turn purple. So, so. But but she loved, what was that song that Cindy Lauper did? Angela used uh, to be singing that to the top of her lungs, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I think it was Girls Just Want to Have girls Fun. Girls Just Want to Have Fun. That's exactly right. Yep. She loved Madonna. She loved Cindy Lauper. But when she came in and said, Mom, I really want to go see Garth Brooks. And I'm like, she has turned the corner. She has <laughs> finally turned the corner. And then she learned to love, um, or you know, she loved, loved Leonard Skinner. Yep. Loved him, you know. And and not many funerals have been opened with Freebird. Yeah. Her funeral was opened with Freebird. And it was it was all about remembering the special things about her. That's right. Remembering the special things about her. And and when I first heard the song that you did, I thought, Oh, wow, that is deep. That is wild. That is amazing. And 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 to know that you could do that in thirty minutes, it had to be a gift from God. It had to be a gift from God because you didn't just dream up this stuff. It no. was absolutely perfect and it suited her to a T. It was absolutely perfect. Now, when you wrote it, it was for your friend who was surviving cancer. Yes. Did you ever imagine you would have to do it at her funeral service? No. No. I don't think any of us did. We never saw this coming. No. And I think that's what I want to share with people. As you approach the holidays, and if you have somebody that you see slipping away into a depression, please reach out and touch them. Please reach out and help them because... We are all saying, we wish we had done more. We wish we had seen this coming. We wish, and in reality, it is God's plan, and we couldn't change it anyway. No. You know, so it, it is what it is. But we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to some Christmas photos. And then when we come back, Mike is going to be set up, and he's going to sing you. Is it Angela's Smile? Angela's Smile. Angela's Smile. And uh, it was written in 2000. Was it 10? I think 2010. Yeah. yeah. You performed it on live TV for us, and when you did, we got tons of emails, tons of calls, people saying, oh my gosh, that song is so her. So most of our viewers today never got to meet Angela. She was my co-host for years. She was the one. Honey, she came sliding into the studio every day late, always. But we had really slick floors, and you could hear her sliding in her seat. She was that kind of girl. She was always smiling, and you're going to get to hear the music when we come back.
Seeing beauty in your eyes and smile The hill isn't true A friend of friends Through the worst of times Leaving your smile Smiles like yours that help me. Over time, with memories, some begin to fade, but never all of the smiles. It's hard to be, but I always look back at the smile Smiles like those that help me. When things get hard and eerie, and only for a while. It always helps to have a friend who has that smile. There's so much in your smile that words could never say. And I, I see an angel smiling at me. And I your smile that oh wow okay I made it through it you made it through it you barely made it through it yeah. you haven't done that song since her funeral no but to be able to share that with the world today it is available on YouTube yeah. so if there's somebody sitting out there who lost somebody and, and they just want to remember and they want to think about that person's incredible smile, that person's incredible way of giving. Mike, how do they find this on YouTube? Uh, you can you can search either Angela's Smile or or just search my name, Mike Rizuko, and it should come up. Okay. Um, when, when this was shared with us the first time, I remember she was just jumping up and down and she was so excited that anybody cared that much about her. And I think there are so many of us who go through life and we don't understand what we mean to others. Yeah. She was one of those people. She really didn't understand what she meant to others. And it was like um, her friend who drove up from Bradenton, Florida. She didn't know that she loved her that much that she would drive from Bradenton, Florida for her service. There were so many people who came out and said, I wish we had known. I wish we had seen. In all honesty, did you see what happened did you see any of that coming no because she had that smile her smile always comforted 
everybody. I yeah. mean, so, I mean, you just, you got the impression, her warmth come from her smile. And when you were around her, it made you feel better. Right. I mean, it, it just did. When in reality, she would go home and cry herself to sleep. And I right. think that is why I made up my mind we're going to reach people who are hurting because I don't want anybody to face what I faced last January. Don't let somebody slip away from you. Don't let somebody not know how much they were loved. It is so important. It is so important that you tell them every day you made an impact on my life. Now, how long had you known Angela? Since, since around the fifth grade. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was third grade or fifth grade, but you think about what y'all went through as kids because neither one of you had a great raising. Yeah. You know, you had a rough time. Um, things don't always go perfectly for you, but you had that companionship and you could share, and she always was smiling. Always. Always smiling. And, and I said, when I look back on the people at her funeral, she did make a difference. And she did matter. She did. She did matter. But she never saw that. She never saw that. And I hate that. So, and a know. lot of times it's hard to see when you're close in, you know. and Very hard. Very hard. But to be able to share the message, and that's what, you know, Angela's Angels was designed to help the hurting. And there's so many women out there who feel worthless and feel useless and feel like they are of no value and that just kills me. Because every single person has value. Every single person has value. And it's important that we reach those who feel that they don't. And I said, you know, during the holidays I've seen so many women who said, I'm a single mom, I don't have this, I don't have that, I'm worried about kids and Christmas and electricity and food. How do you reach those people and how do you help them? You know, it just, you don't want anybody to give up. Right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, each, each, each case will be different. I mean, to reach somebody, you have to find the, the certain format and path to reach each person differently. Yeah. And I can't help but wish, wish I could go back a year. Oh yeah, we all are saying, why didn't we see this coming? Why did we not see this coming? Because she was always smiling and she hid that hurt. And I think that is the thing that I want to share with everybody. If you see somebody who you're thinking, well, it seems okay, but I'm not sure it is. There are counselors available. There are preachers available to talk to. There are friends who will listen. Right. And, and I think that is so important that, that nobody goes through the holidays feeling worthless or useless or of no value. I mean, you may feel that you don't have that one friend, but you really do. You really you do. Just, you just have to really think. Yeah. You, you just have to stop and think who's my who's, who's yeah. friend. You know, her daughter said something to me the other day that made so much sense. And, and we have thought and thought and thought, you know, why did she take her from us? because we miss her so much, but she is not hurting anymore. And I said, that's the one thing that got me through this. She had been in so much pain and so worried about the financial disaster and worried about her foreclosure. And so, and there's no pain now. Where she is, she is not suffering. So I have to find some kind of, I'm not going to say joy in that, but I will say I find some comfort in that. Some relief. I finally found some comfort. You know, and it's, it's part of God's plan. It and is. What that is, only He knows. Only He knows. And, and why He, you know, it was His choice. And I have said that a million times. That gun didn't have to go off. Those pills and alcohol didn't have to come out to be deadly. You know, there are so many things that would have changed that moment. But it is in His plan. And I accept that. So, but... If you have an opportunity to speak to somebody and say, you really matter to me, don't miss that opportunity because that moment may be a fleeting moment and it's gone. Before you know it. Before you know it. Before you know it. Now, have you thought about putting Angela's smile on a CD? Have you done anything with it? Is it available to people? It will be. I'm actually, I'm, I'm in the middle of recording a, a CD, okay. a record. Uh, It'll, it'll still be a while before it, okay. before it gets done. What but other music will be on it? Uh, it'll be all 
original songs that I've wrote okay. in the last last year. And how many have you written total in your lifetime? Probably about 60, 65 wow. or maybe more. Wow. I, I've written some for other bands, other people. You right. Know, uh, but, uh, Do I, they always come from your heart with such heartfelt meaning as Angela Smile? No. No. See, that is... No. It's so precious and so special. I mean, uh, I can, I, I can take an idea and just write a song, but that one, that one's, that one's different. Yeah, it is. It is I've very only, different. I've only written two or three that mean something to me, and, right. and that's that's the one. And the rest of it was entertainment or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, boy, do I like a variety of music. And somebody was riding with me one day, and they said you listen to some strange stuff. And I said, well, I listen to what I like. And I listen to what brings comfort or sadness or joy or whatever the feeling is. And I was listening to a song the other day, and it was Old Rivers by Walter Brennan. And I thought about that. And I thought, I can remember being a kid. And the first time I heard that song, and I just loved it. And it brought comfort to me of that old man walking behind that mule. And, and I'm like, you know, and then the next song I'm listening to is Martha and the Vandellas dancing in the street. So, yeah. yeah. I do like a variety of music, but, but you do look often for a message in a song. Yeah. And the message in this song um, it does bring a message of hope, you know, because her smile did change people around her. It, it did. It changed people around her, and we all have that ability to reach out and touch somebody. I was going through, and if you think God don't play tricks on you and do crazy things, I know he's sitting up there laughing at me. Last night I got a phone call. And somebody said, we need a copy of a lease that you might have. And I said, okay. And it was years ago on my old computer. Now, I didn't know this about computers, but computers continue to get emails even if they're unactive. So I said, well, give me a few minutes and let me try to get on this computer. Well, knowing you were going to be on today, it was so weird how all this happened. Nobody's asked me about this computer for three years. So I get on the computer, and it happens to be the one I shared with Angela. And we were connected, however they do it, and Wi-Fi, you know, I don't know nothing about that stuff. So anyway, we were connected at work. And so when I turned on my computer, like 3,000 emails start coming in. And I'm going, are you kidding me? So so many emails were coming in so fast, it kind of froze the computer, and we had an issue. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm in there, and I'm hitting these buttons. And then all of a sudden, these pictures start popping up, and it was Angela on my back porch with Dawn, and she is smiling, the most beautiful smile. And I thought, I didn't even know that picture ex existed. Yeah. I didn't even know that picture existed. So I'm sitting there looking at it, and then I found these things that she had written me, and it was like thought for the day, and, um, you know, just, um, Mom, think about this, or just little emails. And I thought, this is so weird that I got this phone call from somebody from trucking that I hadn't talked to about <laughs> trucking in forever. And they wanted to know if I could produce a copy of a lease that they needed to use it as an example. And I said, sure, I'll try to find it. And when I went to that computer, I knew why I was at that computer. It was to bring back those special memories and those special little things she'd written. And, yeah. and on it was an email we got from a viewer. And I had said on the air that day that I was stupid. I said, man, I have done some stupid things. And this little viewer who is... 78 years old, had written me the most precious message, and it said, don't ever say you're stupid again. You are not stupid. You are the smartest woman, da 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 da, da. Well, and she said, I don't know what your master's is in. you got to die. <laughs> I mean, because I have a GED, and I am so proud of my GED, and I had to work hard to get my GED. And she said, I don't know what your master's is in, but you have mastered everything you ever said. And I just died laughing. I thought, lady, I had to wait till I was 30-something years old to get my GED. So, and I thought, I have made a difference in lives, and I have touched people. And from that, that will be my legacy. Hopefully, when my day is done and somebody is doing my service, they will say she really made a difference in my life. Everybody makes a difference in somebody's life. Everybody does, yeah. And I think that's important that we look. Maybe we only touch that one person, but we touch that one person. And that's why you want to strive to be a better person. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to touch them in a negative way. Right, exactly. I'd rather touch somebody such as Angela did me. Mm -hmm. I mean... Well, I told you a story about a gentleman who came in yesterday, and he's 
living without electricity. He's living in the cold. He has nothing. But he wanted to be warm, and so I invited him in, and, and I got tickled when I left. My co-worker sent me a message and said, I'm going to choke you out because I basically <laughs> left him in a bad position. But, but I said, my mama used to say, and I would fuss at mama, I'd say, mama, you can't just welcome in strangers. And she said, honey, we don't know what form God will come back in. We don't know what this will be or when Jesus comes back. And I said, mama, I said, you can't just invite people in. Well, yesterday, and this man had crystal blue eyes. But they had so much sadness in them. Yeah. They had so much sadness in them. And he was living without electricity, living without heat. Had been doing this for months. And, and he was, and I just thought. So I just left him there in the warmth, you know. And then yeah. I said, I've got to run to Staples. I'll be back. But I hope that warmth for that short time made a difference in his life. It's, it, it's almost like the commercial you see on TV where one good deed, somebody sees one good deed and right. they pass it on. Right, right. And he said, I walked from town today, and my leg cramped up on me, and I'm sorry, but I needed somewhere to get warm. And I thought, okay, we have somewhere the heat is on and it's warm. Come on in. And and that was just a little something that I thought would make a difference. And, and I looked, I thought about him all night last night. I thought, I don't know his story, you know, but we all have a story. We've all come from somewhere, and we have made it through some pretty tough times. And you want to share the goodness that there is there is goodness in everybody and um, we can give back to somebody else. I, I love that um, old people loved Angela and, and old people would come to the florist and I would be looking for her and I'd be looking out the big glass window and I'd say, where is she? And I'd just look and, and she'd be standing at the door with the door open talking to an elderly somebody who had picked up flowers. Then she'd come running back there and she'd say, Oh my gosh, she is so precious. She is so, so, and she, and I said, well, I've been looking for you for 20 minutes. And she said, but mom, she said, I might be the only person she sees today. And I thought that is so true. You know, that is so true. We might be that only person that has the ability to reach out to somebody that day. And, and it's funny you say that. I, I can remember when we were kids, we would leave the swimming pool to go to my house for lunch. And she would sit on the front porch with granny and we would have to actually drag her off the porch to go back to the swimming pool to go <laughs> right right so. yeah yeah she always uh, there was something about angela and old people and uh, you know it just it, it it is a precious memory and i and i said as we approach the holidays there's nothing we can do for each other except to get together and share those special memories and there are so many special memories um I, when i think about she and dawn and the things that they you know, in Angela's mind, Dawn was always the favored child. And in Dawn's mind, Angela was always the spoiled <laughs> child. You know, they have all these things. And now we're sitting around and we are finally finding some joy and comfort in those memories. And, and it took us a while to get there. But, um, you know, I hate the holidays like today. We had obits and half the people I read the obits are, are, are younger than me. So there are other families facing the kind of thing we do that first Christmas without them, that first birthday. <laughs> Angela's birthday is December 24th. Yeah, and I'm so dreading that day, but it's going to be okay. You know, it's going to be okay because she is no suffering, no pain, no sorrow again. So, um, you know, and, and I hope that we can share Angela's smile with many, many people. I hope so. Now, if you'd like to get a copy of it, you can go to YouTube and um, you can connect with you. Do you have you have a Facebook page so people yes. can reach you? Tell them how to uh, spell your name so they can well, find you. Well, you can go to my music page. Okay. Uh, which is just Mikey, M-I-K-E-Y, okay. and uh, should should be able to find it there. And I I I got a, I've got the song posted on there. So and it's video. on my Facebook page too. And I keep moving it up. It'll move down a day, and then I'll move it back up, and just kind of move it back and forth. Right. So. And there's two versions of the video out. There's the new one that my wife Lori made uh -huh. with, the, with the pictures of Angela, and then there's the live version. So I've never seen the live version. That's uh, when we when we. Played on oh, on the show. That's show. right. That's right. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. So if you'd like to get a copy of it, please get in touch with Mike. Um, you can reach out to him on Facebook. Do you want to give your phone number if somebody's interested in booking you and having you come and do something? Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, okay. My phone number is 706-692-0879. I'll be happy to come out and play. You know, I think that it's so important for, um, there are self-help groups, there are groups of people who are struggling and, and battling something that they need a positive message, and there is a positive message in Angela's smile. That smile that you give can truly make a difference in somebody else's life. 
and and I know that her smile made a difference in many lives. I hear from our viewers every single day, and they said we loved Fridays. We loved when Angela was on. She was so funny, and she was funny. She was. She was funny, and and I can tell y'all we have done live TV, and I looked down one day and I said, Ange, what kind of socks have you got on? And she said, Mom, forget my socks. Look at my shoes. They don't match. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding me? And she said, well, one's black and one's blue, and I couldn't tell the difference. They're the same shoes. They're just the wrong colors. And I said, oh, my gosh. So um, she always she made you feel better. Yeah, yeah, she, she was, was a, a joy. joy. To be around. She was a joy to be around. And I hope that you will check out Angela's Smile. I hope you will check it out on YouTube, like it, and um, give it a good review and, and help Mike. And when your CD comes out, you got to come back and be with us again. We would love to have you back. And okay. Does the CD have a name yet? No, no. It's just, we're just, I've got two songs done and working on the third. Okay, <laughs> so. okay. Well, I look forward to it. I hope that the song will be one of those titles that really captures people and, and does make a difference in a life because that's the kind of thing that you can do. We are going to do what we don't do. We never say goodbye. We say we'll see you later tomorrow. Our mayor, Mayor Bill Hughes, will be with us and we will be talking about the progress coming on with the new casino coming into Murphy. He is looking forward to new jobs coming into our area. We are looking forward to 2014 bringing the economy back in Murphy. I hope that that happens. Hope that your small business is doing well. And if so, we would love to talk to you. Come and join us here at Local TV4 and Murphy Cable, where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. We'll see you again soon.